interrupt you, but you understand this stuff. Thank you for being with us, first of all, this morning, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your having me on. Let's talk about this. You have stopped short of calling for a ceasefire, but you have uh, asked for a humanitarian pause instead. And there are lots of criticisms of everybody who takes every position on this, whether you've called for a ceasefire or a humanitarian pause or nothing at all. What's the response that you've had to critics who, who say a pause just drags out the, the stuff that's going on? Well, here's my uh, position. Uh, what happened on October 7th was uh, brutal, atrocious. Israel has the right to get the Hamas perpetrators and uh, bring them to justice. But it is just heartbreaking to see the enormous civilian casualties. And it's a complex situation because Hamas does put its military equipment and some of the fighters in civilian areas. But we need not just a humanitarian pause to get food and fuel and electricity into Gaza. We also need to make sure that the bombing is not targeting uh, in any way hitting uh, the civilian sites like schools and refugee camps. Now, I know that Israel is not in any way targeting civilians, but as your conversation with Una Hathaway showed, that there is this extraordinary obligation to make a distinction between civilians and military combatants. And my view is, in that complex case where you have many civilians, we should have operational patience that the uh, military can get the Hamas terrorists. They can track them. They can get them when they leave. They can get them in the tunnels. But there should not be uh, this bombing uh, of schools, of refugee camps, of hospitals. There are, as I was describing in the last segment, uh, lots of fissures here. There are some um, amongst members of Congress. There are some within the Democratic Party establishment. There are some at the White House. And, and there are some uh, amongst voters. But uh, a Huffington Post exclusive is reporting that the approach that, that, that Joe Biden and the White House initially took is fueling tensions within the State Department, where managers have told staffers they shouldn't expect to influence U.S. policy on Israel Palestine, regardless of their national security chops. The article notes that, quote, some department staff say they feel as if Blinken and his team are uninterested in their experts' advice as they focus on supporting Israel's expanding operation in Gaza. There's basically a mutiny brewing within state at all levels, one State Department official said. This is interesting because the, the, the same reporting indicates that these experts are told your expertise and commentary is welcome on all other issues, not on this one. This is interesting to me. Well, look, this is an emotional issue. It's an issue that uh, goes to a person's view of justice, of, uh, uh, of history. And so it's not, uh, it, it doesn't come as a surprise to me that there are heated uh, opinions of that at the State Department. I do believe that Secretary Blinken uh, has reached out and is meeting with them. Ultimately, of course, it's the president and secretary of state's decision. One of the things I have suggested uh, to the president uh, his team is that he should meet with the members of Congress who have called for a ceasefire. I'm not one of them, but there are 18 to 20 uh, members who have. Uh, and I do think that the secretary and the administration need to engage uh, members of all uh, parties. The one thing I think that the progressive wing can is coalescing around is this idea that I uh, expressed earlier, that the bombings of dense civilian sites uh, should not take place. Even if there is a terrorist there, even if Hamas is using civilian human shields, there are other ways to track and get uh, those terrorists. Uh, are you concerned, particularly with the, the, the data that I was sharing about um, where Arab Americans and, and Muslims are on this, particularly in the state of Michigan, where um, it, you know, it was a very close election, are you concerned that this divide, if not addressed, and I'm not arguing about how it should be addressed, because there may be a, a lot of ways to address this, could cost Democrats the election in 2024? Yes, I'm concerned that it's a, a political issue, but it's not, Ali, just with the Muslim Americans in Dearborn, Michigan, or just with Arab Americans. There is a generational divide on this issue. Uh, this is an issue that has uh, touched progressives. Uh, and so it is an issue that has really uh, touched an emotional uh, nerve uh, in uh, among Democrats. And that's why I had suggested that we do need to engage with people across the party and at least have a dialogue and listen and uh, understand where they're coming from.